Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the video. Today I'm working on the Savage Flux. So this is the version two and I wasn't even going to do a video, but now that I've got it kind of torn apart and I've been working on the parts and removing the parts and I'm going to be installing a new servo, all that kind of good stuff. I thought, Hey, you know what? Why not just kind of do a quick update video to show what's going on? Now, the funny thing is most of the times when we do update videos, we are adding parts. We're adding, you know, whether they're beefier drive shafts, beefier chassis, beefier shock towers, whatever. I'm actually working in reverse. So this originally was my HBI Savage Flux version two. And I had traded with a buddy and he wanted to build more of a shelf queen out of it. So he had bought some Integi parts. And if you don't know about Integi, and this is, I actually just saw a post this week where a guy was building a sledge and he had done a bunch of Integi parts on it. And someone kind of commented being a newbie build. But we all got it. And I know it sort of came across as kind of a, you know, a douchey thing to say. But to be fair, if you plan on building a truck to drive and beat on and jump. And I don't even mean send. I just mean jump. You you don't want a lot of Integi parts on your truck. Now, before we get right into it, and I'm going to show you, if you, if you didn't watch the last video, I'm going to show you one of the parts that broke. But I'm going to show you some of the parts that I've kept. So this did have aluminum arms. It had aluminum upper arms. It had these really wonky turnbuckles, the shock towers. And I don't know. I'm going to keep calling these things C-hubs. I don't know what the proper name is. I've decided to keep those on because the orange just looks perfect. It's, it's a perfect match to the HBI orange. And for now, I'm going to leave the shock towers on as well. They do look good on here. And... Because I don't plan on super sending this truck, I think I'll be okay. Don't get me wrong. If all of a sudden I notice that one's bent, hey, we'll swap it out. We'll put the stocks back on. But what I want to do before we get into everything that I've done on the truck, I just want to show you an example of Integi Metal. Now, if you watched the video I released a few weeks ago of the Savage, it was kind of my first run since I got it back. You'll have seen this. But this here is an Integi upper arm. And to be fair... It looks pretty beefy. You got big aluminum rod ends. You have a what looks to be, guys, a big steel turnbuckle in comparison. See if I can do my best job here. This is off of, I think, either my Big Rock or a Creighton. I can't remember. And you can see this, guys, is a lot bigger. It's a lot thicker. So this looks to be big and beefier. After a not so crazy hit, this is what happened to one of them. Now, what you really got to see here is, and I mean, I'm doing this guys because we watch it all the time where people get into RC, they're new to RC, and they'll go online, they'll go on eBay, they'll see Integi parts, you know, reasonably priced compared to everybody else, and they'll pick them up and they'll think that they're building a basher. They think that by adding that metal, it's going to make it even stronger. Well, to give you an idea, guys, again, this is the upper arm. Now, I'm going to do my best, but look at how thin-walled right there is. I'm going to try to bring it in. Look at that. There's nothing there. And you can see where that rod stops. And then over here, you've got this. So this would have gone together do, 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 like that. And, you know, again, you would think that this would be strong, but when you look at it, it's just so cheap. And you can tell it's that bad metal. You can see it's almost like a powdered metal. It looks horrible, but it's just look at how thin walled, especially like along here is, you know, a little bit thinner here, a little bit more thicker on this side. But again, guys, it's such garbage metal, metal that it doesn't matter. It's kind of the same sort of metal. Um, you think of something like an X-Max, their pinions and spurs, a lot of actually Traxxas's pinions and spurs are just garbage. They're made out of that bad metal. And that's kind of the same thing going on here. So I, when I got this truck back, it had everything, all the Integi parts on it. I removed the arms right away and I'd removed the turnbuckles, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to leave these on. They looked again, guys, beefy. They look strong and they look sharp on the truck. So I left them on and the, there was one hit where I did come down kind of hard on the front it had survived that. And then the next hit, I actually landed on the rear a little bit rough and that's when it broke. So I think it probably got a, just a good crack in the metal and it didn't take much of a hit to finally break it off. So either way, I'm just showing you guys that because 
I watch and I see a lot of posts where, you know, people are excited. They're posting their newly built truck and they've got all these Integi parts on it. Heck, I've seen it where people have done these full X maxes where aluminum arms, everything. And, you know, people kind of cringe. They're like, hey, you know what? If, you, if you're gonna bash that, you might wanna remove those. And then usually at that point, the person kind of gets upset because they've just spent all this money and all this time. But you know what, guys? We, a lot of us know this. So a lot of you guys right now that are watching this, you 100% get this. You stay clear from this brand. You stay clear from companies that just make parts for show. And Antegi, guys, goes back forever. Like, I mean, ever. I actually, guys, had an Emacs, a brushless Emacs that I had built um, like 20 something years ago that I had done a lot of Integi parts on. They were beautiful arms, red anodizing, the silver anodizing as well, but it was it was what it was. It was designed to be, well, I know. At the time, I actually thought I was building a stronger truck, but in reality, after I got it and started driving it, I realized what I had done to it. So I haven't made that mistake since. Part of me still thinks I should remove these um, shock towers and possibly these C-hubs, but you know what? What really is the worst that's gonna happen? You're gonna break something, you're gonna bend it, Hey, you know what? You fix and you repair it and you get back out again. All right, moving on guys. Now I do have a cold, you can probably tell, so I don't really wanna talk forever, but again, because I had the truck apart, I thought this would be a good time to kind of go over everything. Now, because I was removing the upper arms, I had to remove a, a lot of the front, so the front kind of bumper skid, I had to take that all off. And one thing that you need to know, if you've got a Savage, and if there's another way to do this, please let me know. If somebody's watching this and you're a Savage, connoisseur or whatever removing this bumper this skid plate guys right here it looks like it's four bolts take it out it would come out that was not the case what i ended up having to do was this plate sits here and it's kind of obviously guys screwed in what i actually had to do was you pull the the whole skid kind of a, out and you got it on this really weird bend and then you actually had to loosen the screws so that this can lift up a bit because this won't slide out. It hits on the edge of the chassis. So you've got to undo the screws a little bit and then you're able to slide it out. At that point, I'd got it out, but then I realized that I wanted to work on the steering. I was decided that I was going to replace the steering servo since I was doing all this. That, hey, you know what? I was just going to pull it right apart. So we are removing the stock servo. This thing, guys, is absolute garbage. I don't even care what the ounces of torque are because... It's just that bad. Now, I do have, I had a couple of servos I picked up, guys, a couple of AGF servos. I've been using these lately. And this one originally was for my MT8 because I was going to be changing the ESC. I was going to be able to take advantage of the 8.4 volts. I think it's about 500 ounces of torque at that point. But because this thing is such a pain to kind of work on. It's not that it's hard, it's just, it, it's kind of a nuisance to get into everything. Even to get the servo out, I had to remove the center drive shaft. And then to do that, I had to remove some of the screws and kind of bend this up a little bit so that I could get room to take the drive shaft out. Just a super pain. I decided to throw this big guy in. Now, at six volts, which is what the stock ESC is gonna be, it's only gonna see around 390 ounces of torque, which is still gonna be a lot better than the garbage servo that was in there but I do have plans to install, and I've got it guys right here. This is a Mamba Monster X. So this is obviously not the newest one, but it was the one that came out after the two and all that kind of stuff. I'm thinking it is, I know it's at least 7.4. I was hoping it would say on the box if it went up to 8.4. 8 amp peak, two to six S, nah, whatever. I'll look later. I'm not, I can't remember if this is an eight, if it'll do over eight volts. But we're going to see, either way, it'll at least do 7.4. And at that point, I think I'm up to about 450 ounces of torque with this thing. So I'm going to get all this guys kind of dialed in. I tightened up the servo saver spring because, again, if you watch that first run that since I've had it back video, I just did it a few weeks ago, the steering was absolutely awful. I could turn one direction, couldn't turn the other. So I've spent a lot of time in here. I do have plans to kind of rebuild the truck. I've got upgrade parts for the diffs, tuning, all that kind of stuff. So what I will do at that point during the winter when I'm not really driving my trucks, I'll pull all this off, lube everything up nice, get everything nice free flowing. Because right now it's okay, but it's still not great. So it does need some work. 
I'm more just excited to get this thing running good for now. And then again, guys, once the winter comes, I'll, I'll actually give it a full rebuild. All right, so I got the truck all back together. We've installed that AFG servo. Here it is right here, just so that you guys can see the specs of it. Now it is kind of a waste to run it at six volts because that way I'm only seeing 390 versus the 500 if I was running at 8.4, but that's still gonna be a huge increase over the stock servo. It is waterproof. Now on the topic of waterproof guys, this does not have a waterproof receiver box. So I have the radio link. I think it's an R7 FG which is their receiver that's waterproof. It's got the built-in gyro. It's obviously seven channel, which is a bit overkill for this thing, but I wanted a waterproof receiver. Gonna be running it off the RC8X. And on while we're talking guys, just about the servo as well, I'm gonna try to do my best to show you this. I probably should have done this while I had none of these uh, parts back on, but you can see the servo right there. Now the stock servo is pretty close to your standard size servo. You can tell it's not very deep now. I'll show you guys over here on this older Savox 1230 that if we put these together, you can see, hopefully you can see, yeah, you can see how much taller this 1230, 1230 is. And I mean, I've got lots of servos that are also guys this type of height. And just with the way everything kind of goes together on the servo, I don't know if that actually would have cleared. I don't think it would. I think you'd end up hitting kind of the mount, the switches on and all that kind of stuff. So if you've got a Savage and you are looking at replacing your steering servo, definitely look for something that's more kind of your standard size. So that's kind of one of the pluses again with this AGF servo is that it is close to your standard size servo. Actually guys, I did, when I had it out, I did check. They're pretty much spot on, but you're going to get a lot more torque out of it. Once again, Bit of a waste running it at six volt. Now I had mentioned that I was gonna be changing the ESC over to a Mama Monster X, which would obviously guys give me more voltage on the BEC. But the only hiccup with that is, is that you kind of then have to build basically another set of wires, solder on the bullets and all that kind of stuff. And not that that's a big deal or anything, but if I don't, if the servo at six volts running at 300 ounces of torque, it's not like you run big monster tires on this truck or anything. And it's also not super heavy. If I see today, cause we are going to take this guys out for a quick little run. If I see today that the steering is fine and it feels good on six volts, then I may just keep this system in here. I know it's kind of a bit of a waste. It's, it, it's not like it was a cheap servo or anything like that. So to keep it at six volts doesn't really make a lot of sense. However, it is waterproof. And if it, gives the Savage the steering that I want, then you know what, what the heck, we'll just keep it in there. I do have another servo as well, but I had picked this one up, it was actually gonna be a shift servo in another truck that I never ended up building. It's only at six volts, 264 ounces of torque. So it actually guys would still be an increase over the stock servo. So I may at some point just see if I can drop that in. I'm trying to get an idea right now. It actually is though, again, quite a bit taller guys. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that with the packaging, but it is taller. So I don't know how that, if that'll actually fit. We may try, but either way, we've got the truck ready to go. We're gonna throw the tires on and we're gonna see how this thing runs with that servo. We're back here. We lost my dirt mound, unfortunately. I was enjoying that pile, but uh, well, at least I still have a place to run for now over here. Now, if you guys remember the first video or the last video, I guess I made of the Savage X, we couldn't turn. We can turn now. We are going to take things kind of slow today because I just want to make sure this truck stays together. <laughs> she flies. I've also got the, whoo yeah, super laser nut. This is probably gonna be, I don't know, I'm not gonna say my last run of the year, but it is getting cold. Don't let the sun fool you. <laughs> I really should move that water bottle, but whatever.
been trying to decide if before I lose all nice weather, if I wanted to pick up the Savage Flux XL. So this thing, but the XL version. I've always kind of wanted both of them. <laughs> yeah. My buddy, he wanted, was at one point going to actually just XL this truck because it's not all that hard to do it. There's a few parts you gotta buy, chassis, if you wanna do the center diff, the drive shaft, all that kind of stuff, but I wanna keep them both. Oh, bounce, bounce, bounce. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Oh, guys, look at that. All right, guys, we've got the truck home. It's back on the bench. It's all cleaned up. And once again, we got a short run out of the Savage X. Now, to be fair, the first run, guys, was those Integi parts that weren't Loctited in. Second was, again, the Integi part, that upper arm that snapped. So definitely not faulting the truck for that. This time, it was the rod end. So the ball itself, guys, was still fine. The ball was actually still in the arm when I took this all apart. And it's kind of funny because the ball's in here now, guys, pretty good. Like I was trying to push it out and it, it, it didn't just completely pop out. But I mean, you weren't going to try to, I could have pulled the screw out, guys, and put this back in. But I mean, the rod, it, it wouldn't have held up. It would have popped out again. So either way, happy with the Savage X. Very happy, guys, with the AGF RC Servo. Running it at six volts. I mean, it's a bit of a waste, but at the same time, guys, it did completely change the steering to the truck. It feels good. It's very smooth. It's got enough torque at 390 ounces, guys, for these tires, as well as probably some of the tires I will be running on this truck. I'm not going to be running big, heavy tires just because of the, the 1.8 size. It's more of a standard 1.8 scale size truck that I think this servo will do a good job. And again, like I mentioned, guys, it's waterproof, all that good stuff. The rod ends, though, guys, just quickly, I'm going to mention this. I did Google when I got home you know, RPM rod ends for Savage X shocks and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't really find a whole lot of posts on it. So I'm pretty sure that this was just kind of a fluke accident. I'm going to keep looking to see if I can find RPM ones for it, but I will order the HPI ones guys right away, just so I can get this truck out, get it running before it gets cold. Because I've, since I've got this back, guys, all I wanted to do is run it. And once again, guys, today I was having fun, even just with those small jumps. This truck is just so smooth. It looks so freaking good that I was, I was enjoying it. But yeah, we had this little thing happen. So we're going to fix that and we're going to get this truck back out again. And guys, you know what? That's it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe and have a great day.